Uh, so welcome everyone. Welcome to Muslim Teens Dean and everything in between with your host, Aliyah Kayim. Today I am joined with Sister Hiba. Jazakallah so much for joining me today. What well, Yaki, it's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Mm, of course. So do you mind giving me a brief introduction for those of the viewers who may be interested and want to know more about you? Sure. Well, my name is Hiba Soba Haider. Long name, long last name, I know. Um, and I am a children's book author, specifically a Muslim children's book author. And I've been doing this for the past couple of years, but I've been like a writer, you know, I've dabbled here and there in writing and whatnot. Um, I wrote a children's book series called Maimuna's Musings about a little girl named Maimuna who, you know, sets out to discover who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through his attributes and through fun, engaging stories that kids can um, relate to, inshallah. Yeah, it's yeah, so important to have because I feel like there aren't as many like stories and like fun kids books out there. So it's cool that like you're doing that, especially for Muslim kids. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. So before we get into the questions, I usually like to do icebreakers. So I just do rapid fire, really quick, random questions and you can give like your most okay. answer. Yeah. Let's do it. So favorite recent purchase? Oh, a book, actually. Yes, um, it's called The Angel Series by Imam Dr. Omar Sulaiman. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, he's like so famous. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Read his books too. They're, they're amazing, mashallah. Oh, that's great, mashallah. Um, on the topic of that, what's your favorite book? Oh, God. Um, I don't have one favorite book. I have many, actually. And um, a couple by author Asma Hussain, A Place of Refuge, Temporary Gift. I have, you know, uh, some that I love by Sheikh Yasser Qadi, too, like Lessons from Surah Al Kahif. And um, yeah, so a Quran, of course, mm -hmm. one of my top ones, my top one. Yeah. But yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, wow, that's great. Um, and what's one thing that you don't understand? One thing that I don't understand, um, how kids have so much energy. I do not understand that. <laughs> I don't think I'll, I ever will. And I don't remember when I had the same amount of energy. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, favorite emoji? Um, the one that goes like this, the, like the confused one that goes like this. <laughs> the one I don't know. The one that raised one? No, it's it's like a squiggly mouth and oh, oh, it just goes right. like <laughs> that's pretty uh, that's a good one. Uh, and and the last, yeah. And the last one, texting or calling? Texting. Oh. all the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not a phone talker, talker on the phone person. Yeah. yeah, I feel like not a lot of people are, but um, now I want to get right into the questions. Um, so like Sister Hiba said, she is an author, so we're going to be talking a lot about Mamina um, using specifically. So the first question is, was your dream always to become an author? Like, when did you start aspiring to become one if it, you always didn't have that dream? So um, I've... I'm in my 30s and I didn't start doing this until a few years ago. Um, my dream has not always been to become an author. It has been to do something within like, um, I, uh, my dreams changed throughout the decades. And so at first I wanted to be like a stay at home mom. And that was really my first dream ever, which Alhamdulillah I've gotten to do for several years. Um, then I wanted to become a, an English teacher actually actually. And then I took a business seminar program in high school and I fell in love with business. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be an, an, an entrepreneur and I'm going to, you know, have some sort of go into marketing or something like that and human resources. Mm -hmm. And I did, I became an executive for Target um, for a few years. And then, you know, mm -hmm. um, after that, it was just, I fell in love with our Dean, with Islam. So now looking back on it, I'm like, maybe I should have, if I could go back, I would pursue some sort of scholarship in Islam, um, maybe go to Al-Azhar or something, which is why I'm taking, um, I'm pursuing another degree right now in Islamic studies, um, because I just love to learn more and more about the deen, because the more I learn about it, the more I fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. And so this is where my love for the deen and my love for writing, which has always been there, become, you know, they became combined, and I started to write. Wow, that on oh, Masha, that's amazing. Like, just it's so true. Like, I feel like the more people learn about Dean, because our judgments can be clouded by like the what people say on the outside. So when you genuinely learn about it, it's like you then start to fall in love with it more. So it's so cool absolutely that, that initiative. Yes, absolutely. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, I, I and I just wanted to kind of like 
give that and share that love that I have for our Dean for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you know all our children. Mm, that's so important. Um, and the next question is did you try, did you find it difficult trying to find a genre that you wanted to focus on or did you kind of already know as soon as you knew you want to become an author? Um, so I there were factors behind why I chose to become a Muslim children's book author. And one of those factors were that I learned that people were leaving religions in droves, right? And um, because for the main purpose that they did not know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And so to me, that kind of broke my heart. And I was like, I can't imagine my kids leaving Islam because for this reason, because if everybody knew Allah the way that I know him, they would never leave this beautiful religion. And so that's where... I decided to become a children's book author, but there are other, you know, um, genres, inshallah, that I want to venture into in the near future, inshallah. Um, if you can say it, like, what are some of the genres that you're looking into? It's still going to be Islamic. I love to do reflective kind of, you know, writing pieces, and I love to um, just share my thoughts on certain ayahs, hadiths, um, things that happen in life, and correlate it to our dean and how, and just it's something that's motivational for everybody. Yeah, honestly, like motivational books are so like big too now. So it's like, that's honestly a great genre to make it. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, and how did you come up with the idea of my mama musings? So Maimuna's musings Sorry, was I like completely butchered the name. That's okay. <laughs> You're not the first one. Also, <laughs> thank you for not thinking my name is Maimuna, which a lot of people have <laughs> confused that. Um, uh, Maimuna's musings came from you know what I had mentioned earlier that I want to share with children how awesome Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is. And once I heard that, that people were leaving religions because they don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, I was like, no way. I can't just write one book. I'm going to write a series about names of Allah, about Allah's attributes, and, and convey the message in a way that's a, uh, like understandable for kids these days and not preachy and not anything like that. It's not like, hey, this is a lesson you need to learn, but like just a fun story that they can, that has a subtle moral in it, you know, and that will leave them, like, as they finish the story, they'll just have more and more love for Allah in their hearts, and alhamdulillah, I've been able to accomplish that for, you know, most, if not all kids that have read my books, alhamdulillah. Oh, oh, no, mashallah, that's great, and it's like, you're right about, like, not making it, like, preachy, because it's like, if you even see TV shows on like Treehouse or whatever, it's like they're not doing, like they're not scolding you or they're not like talking you down to you. It's like, oh, right. like we're learning together. And so I think that's cool how you have that with your series too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And how did you find an illustrator and editor and team, like the whole just team for Main Moon Amusings? <laughs> So being completely green to the industry, actually, I thought that all you had to do was write a manuscript and submit it to publishers here and there and whatever. I didn't even have a clue about self-publishing and I looked into it and I'm like, this is definitely not the route for me because I did not have time for it. And there are all these self-publishing authors, mashallah, that have done an amazing job. But, you know, I chose the traditional route. Um, you write the manuscript. This, these are kind of the steps. You write the manuscript, you submit it to a publisher. The publisher takes a look at it and the publisher decides whether or not it's good enough to be published. And when I heard a call back, I heard a call back. When I received um, a call back or a message back from my current publisher, you know, she's like, it, it looks good. It just needs a few changes here and there and, and whatnot. So you have to find an editor. And my recommendation is get your manuscript edited by a professional who specifies in your field. And so I'm not just going to look for any editor who is, um, you know, just, hey, look at it for grammatical errors or anything. No, but this editor has to be experienced in children's books, in writing children's books, in editing children's books, and you know, picture books or story books. There's different types too. And um, find the right editor, get your work edited, pay the money to get it, you know, quality, to get quality editing done because our children deserve good quality books, honestly. And um, we would do them a great disservice if we do not get this 
crucial step done. Mm -hmm. Uh, illustrator for me, I found my illustrator, honestly, the illustrators are pretty expensive. And so when my, my publisher gave me a list of some illustrators I could look at and consider, I was like, this is definitely out of my budget. Like there's no way I can be able to afford that. And so I said, well, I'm going to go. And, um, actually a friend of mine gave me that idea. I went to my college and I went to the Muslim Student Association and I was like, hey, do you guys have any aspiring illustrators in your midst or graphic design students or anything? And then they referred me to my current illustrator and I saw her work. I fell in love with her work and I hired her. And so now we work so well together. Alhamdulillah, she really made my vision come to life. Yeah, honestly, the university idea is so great because it's like going or even going to a college university is like those students also need experience too. Yes. So not only is it benefiting you, it's also benefiting them and helping. Absolutely. Them. So that's honestly great that you did that. And like even just thinking about it, like ed editing is we don't realize how important it is because it's like we like our work to us is just amazing and we sometimes don't catch those mistakes that other people can. So like yeah. investing your money into a good editor is probably like very important. Yeah, it's one of the most crucial steps to take when you write a children's book, because mm -hmm. again, uh, I mean, our Muslim kids are amazing, wonderful kids, and they deserve the best, and we yeah. want to give them the best, and this affects their deen, actually, so if you see a children's book, and it's written like, without a care, and it's not quality work, they're not going to care about it, they're not going to want to pick it up and learn from it, and, you know, they're not going to love it as much as they love other books that they find in their schools or libraries or what have you. Right, exactly. It's not that like, they're not gonna be drawn towards it. So that definitely makes sense. Um, exactly. But my next question is, what was the biggest failure that you faced when like making Made Moon the Musings and all just the things that went into it? Um, so I don't want to call things um, failures per se, you, you'll for sure run through, um, come through some, you know, failures and challenges and whatnot, but there are mistakes that I've made. And these mistakes, I'm glad I've made them because they've taught me a lot. And being so new to the industry, I didn't know any better. And so I thought that, you know, for my first book, it wasn't professionally edited. And I can totally tell the difference between the first and the second book. Yeah. So I wish I had known how important it was to hire an editor um, to look at my book and I didn't. And I thought it was just as long as you stay under the, the word count that you're supposed to. And as long as everything looks grammatically correct, you're okay. The story was engaging and everything. And alhamdulillah, it's received a lot of positive feedback, but I, I personally feel like it could have been better. And this is something that a lot of authors will tell you when they look at their first book versus all the other future, you know, uh, like their projects now, yeah. uh, there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense too. It's like, you, it's definitely very important. Um, yeah. And the next question, how did you like go from publishing the book into actually getting the books into the kids' hands and reading <laughs> them? <laughs> So much marketing goes into it. You are not done after your, your book becomes published. You are not done. So if you have the means, hire a marketing team. You know, um, your publisher will put the word out there as much as they can, but they won't do the bulk of the marketing because they have other clients to other authors that they're, you know, handling. And so I found myself having to do 99% of the marketing and it's hard work, but if you're strategic with it and you don't, um, you, you just, you have to be strategic. You have to plan how you're going to do it. You have to collaborate with the right people. You have to network with the right people. You'll, you can get it done. It just takes the bulk of your time, but you also have to do it, you know, smart in a smart way. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to immerse myself in social media, which is most of where, you know, your marketing is done. I'm on Instagram and Facebook, but I purposely am not 
you know, um, opening up new accounts like Twitter or Snapchat or whatever, or even going on Clubhouse because I don't want to be immersed in the whole thing. And so I'm doing it and I'm contacting the right people. You have to look at your target market and know that, okay, is this, is this the one I want to collaborate with? Does she or he have the right, uh, the audience that matches mine? And if not, then you don't need it, you know? So as long as you work um, smartly and strategically. Yeah, I think it's important that like when you want to work with someone specifically, like they definitely need to help also see you. Like you also obviously are benefiting them, but they should also benefit you in such a great way. Absolutely. So definitely target market is a very, very important thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And were there any specific resources you use when, because you, like you said, you didn't, you've never been an author before. So were you, were there any specific resources that you use or courses that you took to help guide you to writing your book and publishing it? Yeah, um, obviously you go on Google and you look look up research, hey, everything you need to know about getting your uh, book published or whatever. But I also read, I I forced myself to read a lot of children's books to kind of get the gist of what they're about and what's a good children's book versus not a great one and the word count. And you just have to research so many things before you get into it. And specifically, you have to make sure the information you're putting out there is correct, especially if you're writing a Muslim children's book. You know, there's a difference between Muslim children's books and Islamic children's books. And so like what I'm doing is a Muslim children's book series, which is geared towards specifically Muslim children, but it's for all children mainly. Um, So you have to like make sure that the information you're teaching these little kids is the right information because it has to do with our Dean. And if you put out the wrong information out there, that's a whole, that's a whole area of problems you don't want to mess with because that's a shoulder. Yeah, that's a responsibility on your shoulders and you can't, you can't give them false info about, you know, their Dean. So um, yeah, there's so much that you need to research before you go into something and also um, read to other kids. Once you have your manuscript and it's, it's edited and everything, read it to other kids. I read mine to my kids and I was like, because they're the ones that you want to impress, not, mm-hmm. not anybody else. Mm-hmm. And so if you find it engaging, if you find, if you find that they're really interested and you watch their expressions and all of that, and if there's smiles, if there's laughter, if there's, you know, engagement, then you're good. You're good. But if they're like, mm, this is kind of boring, then there's something to worry about. And it's good to survey children also. Oh yeah, like survey, like it's it's also so important, but also I never really thought about like actually reading children's books because it's like, it, it's true, like, you want to see what do kids generally like and what have like the higher ratings and what are aspects that you might be missing what those books have. It's like, because yeah. they've also got different publishing companies and things like that. So it's all just different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what was one of the biggest lessons that you've learned as working as an author and becoming an author? Um, aside from the steps that I told you about, like, uh, get your work edited, <laughs> um, that was one of the biggest things. Yeah. It's, it's helpful to humble yourself. You need to humble yourself and you need to always, always renew your intention. For me, I'm doing this for Allah and for his sake and to bring people closer to Islam and to close and closer to Allah. I'm not doing it for the notoriety. I'm not doing it for like fame, fortune, whatever, because, uh, if you're an author, you know that we do not make a lot of money off of our books. Like we, we really, really don't. And uh, the majority of authors have, this is their side hustle kind of, you know? Um, so as long as you keep renewing your intention, cause it's easy to get wrapped up in this whole like social media aspect and like, um, oh my God, you know, you're, you're so-and-so, I know you, you're the author of this book and you're, you know, um, it's easy to get lost in that and do not compare yourself to others. Do not at all, uh, because you're your own person. You're doing your own thing for your own reasons. And just keep reminding yourself of what is important to you. Why did you go into this in the first place? Because we tend to lose our authenticity when we're like too involved with social media, especially nowadays. And um, just, you know, uh, take, take constructive criticism, take it gracefully, 
And there are not everybody's going to love your books. And the people who don't, if they are, I've had one book reviewer kind of, you know, she didn't love my book and she was just like, well, you know, I could see blah, 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 but this is what I didn't like about it because blah, blah, blah. So these are things that they do to up the quality in Muslim children's books. And you have to criticism and really think about it and think like, well, was she right? And don't be insulted and offended if you know deep down that, you know what? Yep, I see what she's talking about. I'm going to correct it next time and I'm going to do a better job. So take it like as a challenge and okay, I'm going to do better. And these are my areas that I need to work on and I will work on them. Yeah, honestly, criticism can probably be one of the hardest things to take because we all think that we're good at taking criticism until that criticism comes. And then oh, we're yeah. just like so annoyed at like at the person and we're insulted. So it's like, it, but it's, such, it's also so important because it's like, again, like I said before, you, you don't see sometimes your mistakes and you need other people to catch them. Yeah, it's a learning opportunity for sure. And you have to take it as that. Um, and you can't be too proud and too, you know, not that don't be confident, obviously be confident in your work and, but put out quality work. Uh, don't be too proud to not be able to take constructive criticism, not saying criticism, saying constructive criticism, because there are people that are going to troll you. And there are people that are going to be like, well, I don't like your book. It's stupid. You know, like I, Alhamdulillah, I've never had someone say that to me, but you'll be able to tell, you know, the difference between these types of criticisms. Yeah. And honestly, they, they do it with good intentions and they're, they are good people. And I'm so and grateful to have met this community full of writers and, and, you know, reviewers and editors and all of that, because we are all working together to build one another up and to better this ummah. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. I'll just add to Masha, amazing that the fact that you guys are doing this as a community and really the, your mission statement is so strong. So Jazakal for so much, Sister Hanzel, for joining me today. Um, where can everyone find you? Where can everyone buy your books? You know, all of that jazz. <laughs> Wa'iyaki, thank you so much for having me. So um, go to maymunasmusings.com website to order my books or follow me on Instagram at maymunasmusings, Instagram and Facebook, and I'll have all the information that you need to know on there, inshallah. And again, thank you so much. It was such an honor and pleasure speaking with you. No, it was just as much of a pleasure. So like, thank you so much. I'm sure people have learned so much from this, even whether they're an author or not. And also all the Sister Hibba's links that she just mentioned will be in the description along with Sunday Kids. And inshallah, we'll see you guys all next Thursday. Assalamu alaikum.